Today we're waiting on even cooler cars from Tesla, like the Cybertruck or the Roadster 2.0. But Tesla isn't the only game in town, and so I've put together this list of my top five coolest EVs that aren't a Tesla. First, for some ground rules, I only considered purely battery electric vehicles, which rules out plug-in hybrids like the BMW i8 or diesel electrics, like a Letourneau Land Train. It must also be an independently wheeled land vehicle, which eliminates trains, boats, and airplanes. Vehicles from any time period are fair game, but they must be at least a fully operating prototype and be operated by a human in the vehicle. In the number five place, we have a truly massive contender from Switzerland. Meet the e-dumper. E is for electric and dumper for, well, <laughs> dumping. This 45 ton machine is a Komatsu HD6057 that has been converted to a fully electric powertrain. The battery in this thing is equally massive. It weighs eight tons and has a capacity of 710 kilowatt hours. That's seven times more capacity than a Tesla Model S or X. The nickel manganese cobalt oxide batteries provide up to 3000 amps of current to the 791 horsepower motor. But for trucks like this, what really matters is torque. And this thing brings the heat with over 7,000 foot pounds. Not only is this a ridiculous amount of torque when comparing to a road going vehicle, but it's almost three times the torque of the truck's original powertrain. Because of all this muscle, the e-dumper can carry up to 65 tons of basically whatever it wants in its 40 cubic meter bed, and it can handle a 13% grade while fully loaded. So let's talk about range, and this is where the e-dumper gets interesting. How about infinite range? Yeah, like you would tell your friends when you're a kid and you had to one-up them with Google and yeah, like that infinite. It isn't some crazy perpetual motion hoax either, but it does only work under certain conditions. If the truck is carrying rock downhill, its total weight can be up to 110 tons, 65 tons of rock and 45 tons of machine. During the downhill run, the motor operates as a generator, converting the gravitational potential energy into stored electrical energy in the battery. After it dumps its load at the bottom of the hill, the now lighter 45 ton truck uses the stored electric energy in the battery to make the return trip uphill. Since the downhill truck weight is more than double that of the truck going back up, regenerative braking during the downhill trip completely powers the uphill trip. In fact, they claim that the truck can generate up to 200 kilowatt hours of extra energy every single day. And that's enough energy to power my house for 18 days. For my number four pick, we have to go back in time, like way, way back, like even, even further back. See, back in 1898, a French automobile magazine decided it was time to see who had the fastest automobile in the world. Two men stepped up to the challenge, Count Gaston du Chasselou lubois and Camille Genazzi. Pardon my French there, or Belgian in the case of Genazzi. On December 18, 1898, the Count hit 39.2 miles per hour in his Jantal automobile. Within a month, Genazzi took back the record at a speed of 41.4 miles per hour in a CGA dog cart. This record was short-lived and a few minutes later the Count won up Genazzi at a speed of 43.7 miles per hour. Ten days later, Genazzi drove the dog cart to 49.9 miles per hour. Well, like every gearhead before them, which <laughs> that wasn't very many people, both men decided their cars needed a bit of modification. On March 4th, 1899, the Count took a slightly streamlined Jantau up to 57.7 miles per hour. Oh, and I should mention that all of these cars were battery electric vehicles, as was the car that Genazzi showed up with on April 29th of 1899. This car was arguably the first car to truly embrace aerodynamics or streamlining. Genazzi called it La Jame Canton, and it had two 200 volt motors, which made a combined 67 horsepower to the rear wheels. All of the power and streamlining worked, and Genazzi took back the world record at the blistering speed of 65.8 miles per hour. Yeah, this doesn't seem very fast today, but you have to understand that just years before, these guys were traveling around at the speed of a horse. Genazzi described the experience in this way. The car in which you travel seems to leave the ground and hurl itself forward like a projectile ricocheting along the ground. As for the driver, the muscles of his body and neck become rigid in resisting the pressure of the air. His gaze is steadfastly fixed about 200 yards ahead, 
His senses are on the alert. La Jamee Cantan was not bested until 1902, when it was beat by a, a, a steam-powered car. This makes La Jamee Cantan the last electric car to hold the outright land speed record, earning it the number four on my list. Since 2004, Ohio State University students have built and run three and a half land speed record cars. They started in 2004 with the battery electric Buckeye Bullet 1, and it set the electric land speed record at 315 miles per hour. After this, they picked up a French sponsor, a company called Venturi, and the team followed up with the Venturi Buckeye Bullet 2. In 2009, this car set the land speed record for a fuel cell-powered car, and this was at 303 miles per hour. Then in 2010, the team swapped the electric batteries into the car in place of the fuel cell, making the Buckeye Bullet 2.5, and it hit 308 miles per hour. From here, the Buckeye team set their sights on the 400 mile per hour barrier, and this led to the Buckeye Bullet 3. The Bullet 3 was a powerhouse with four motors driving all four wheels and a total power output of 2,950 horsepower and 2,065 foot-pounds of torque. The power was supplied by 2,000 lithium ion phosphate cells, and in total they weighed in at 1.5 tons, giving the Bullet 95 kilowatt hours of capacity. While this is approaching Tesla Model S capacity, range isn't really a concern over the 11 mile speed run, but peak power is. And so the battery was recharged at the end of each run to ensure maximum power delivery on the next run. In 2016, the Ohio State team took the bullet to the Bonneville Salt Flats, and they laid down a new world record speed of 341.4 miles per hour. Since this is the average speed taken on two consecutive runs, it is slightly less than the maximum recorded speed of 358 miles per. Although the Ohio Venturi team fell short of their 400 mile per hour goal, they did set a new electric speed record and it remains unbroken to this day. Okay, so the Buckeye Bullet 3 can beat an electric record, but how about laying down an outright world beating record for any car? Meet the Volkswagen IDR. On June 24th, 2018, the IDR became the fastest car ever up the 12.4 mile Pikes Peak International Hill Climb in Colorado. The Frenchman Romain Dumont was at the wheel and he crushed the previous record of eight minutes, 13.878 seconds with a new time of seven minutes, 57.148 seconds. The 670 horsepower IDR is powered by two electric motors delivering 479 foot pounds of instant torque to all four wheels. The power is supplied by a 45 kilowatt hour battery. Electric powertrains are ideal for the Pikes Peak Hill Climb because the race occurs over an elevation change from about 9,000 to 14,000 feet. At these altitudes, ice powered cars lose up to 30% of their power during the race as the air thins out. Obviously this wasn't an issue for the IDR and it arrived at the finish line with its full 670 horsepower horses. Horses. But Pikes Peak was just the beginning and VW was keen to show that the IDR could hang with the best in the thick rich air of Deutschland. Yes, in 2019, the IDR took on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. The 23.9 mile Nordschleife circuit has 73 turns, gradients up to 17%, and is really just a twisting rolling strip of asphalt laid through the forest. The F1 champion driver, Sir Jackie Stewart, famously called it Green Hell. Today this track is the international benchmark that automakers use when comparing the performance and handling of their road cars. On March 6, 2019, the IDR lapped the Nordschleife in 6 minutes, 5.336 seconds, beating everything else in the world. Well, ex except for a Porsche 919 Hybrid Evo. See, the IDR is extremely quick with a zero to 60 time of 2.25 seconds, but it's not particularly fast. And it tops out at a speed of 167.8 miles per hour. The fast acceleration is great for the twisty hill climbs and the brutal curves of the Nordschleife, but when the Nordschleife opens up near the end of the lap, the slower IDR could not match the speed of the Porsche. Still, second place at the Nürburgring is something, and the IDR beat the next fastest EV by more than 40 seconds. In July of the same year, the IDR played around at the 1.16 mile hill climb at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Well, it played a little hard. See, the IDR became the first car to break 40 seconds on the track with a time of 39.9 seconds. This was 1.7 seconds faster than the previous all-time record, which was set by a Formula One car 20 years before. 
But 2019 wasn't over, and the IDR wasn't finished either. The 6.78 mile Tiananmen Mountain Road in China winds around 99 corners on its way to the Heaven's Gate Natural Arch. In early September, VW and Dumont were ready for an attempt on the mountain. During the run, the IDR hit speeds up to 143 miles per hour between the corners and achieved an overall time of 7 minutes, 38.585 seconds. While there wasn't a time to beat before the IDR, it was still a spectacular run. And given the IDR's success on the other hill climbs, it's unlikely another car will beat it here anytime soon. Because of all this insane record setting, the IDR holds the number two position on my list. Before we look at number one, I want to touch on a few of the runners up. The C2 is a hypercar produced by the Croatian company Remac. Richard Hammond, like the one from Top Gear and the Grand Tour, he famously crashed the predecessor of this car on a hill climb in Switzerland. Well, the C2 has insane 1914 horsepower and 1696 foot pounds of torque. It's projected to hit zero to 60 in 1.85 seconds, and it tops out at 258 miles per hour. The Owl is more than a bird. It's also a car that's being made by the Japanese company Aspark. With 2,012 horsepower and 1,475 foot-pounds of torque, the Owl achieves an even faster zero to 60 time of 1.69 seconds, and it keeps on accelerating right up to its top speed of 249 miles per hour. Then there's the Lotus Avia. With 2,000 horsepower and 1,254 foot-pounds of torque, this car can hit zero to 60 in less than three seconds, and it tops out at over 200 miles per hour. The Pininfarini Battista is also a very powerful hypercar. It puts out, yeah, you guessed it, 1,900 horses. What's up with all these automakers having electric hypercars that put out between 1,900 and 2,000 horsepower? Anyways, it has a zero to 60 time of less than two seconds, and it's claimed to hit a top speed of 217 miles per hour. So why aren't these cars included in my renowned list? Well, honestly, they were all so similar that it was impossible to pick a winner. And because of that, they really lack uniqueness. Perhaps I'm just not being fair, but I wanted cars that stood out and I just didn't feel like any of these did. Feel free, argue down below. So what vehicle is worthy of the title of top EV of all time? I'll give you a hint. It only weighed in at 77 pounds. It had one horsepower, but it traveled at over 25,000 miles per hour. Yeah, this thing is cooler than a Tesla Roadster launched into space. I'm of course talking about the lunar roving vehicle, which was driven on the moon by the astronauts of Apollo 15, 16, and 17. The LRV had four one quarter horsepower motors, one on each wheel. And this was enough power for the astronauts Harrison Schmidt and Gene Cernan to set a moon land speed record of 10 miles per hour in 1972. The four wheel drive was important as it allowed the rover to off-road its way across the moon. They hadn't really built any roads there yet. And the rover could really carry itself over obstacles because it had 14 inches of ground clearance. For safety reasons, if one or more of the motors failed, that wheel or wheels could be disengaged and that would allow the remaining motors to take the astronauts back to their spaceship. The rover also has four wheel steering, which meant the steering was also redundant and it could still be driven if either the front or the rear steering crapped out. On Earth, the rover weighed in at 462 pounds, but in the one sixth gravity of the moon, it was a featherweight 77 pounds. This lightweight was important because it made the job of unpacking the rover from the side of the lander much easier for the astronauts. Total battery capacity was only 8.2 kilowatt hours and this gave the rover a 57 mile range. But once the silver zinc batteries were spent, there was no recharging them. Talk about range anxiety. Fortunately, the longest time spent on the moon was only 75 hours and the maximum total distance driven was only 22 miles. Unsurprisingly, the lunar rovers are some of the most exclusive cars in existence. Only four were built for a total price of 38 million or 9.5 a pop. Since three of these cars are currently sitting on the moon and the other one was used for parts, I'd say these things are extremely hard to get your hands on. Besides this list, I looked at a few more really cool EVs and I'll link information about them down in the description, along with all the sources and references that I used throughout this video. If you like this video, perhaps you'd like another one of mine, I'll link it over here. 
But ultimately, what do you think of my top five list? I'm sure you won't agree with all my selections and maybe I missed a really amazing EV. So drop me a note down below. Tell me what your favorite EV is. That will pretty much wrap it up for today. I'll see you in the next one.